This Echo trimmer is one of the best residential trimmers you can buy, at least in its price range, but I know a lot of people are going to vouch for its competitors. But to be honest, as long as you take care of them, they should last a long time, no matter what brand it is. However, this one was treated so poorly that it finally came back and bit them because part of it has become damaged and we're going to have to get a little aggressive to fix it. In today's video, we look at this Echo Trimmer and the problem is that it won't start and the reason is rather strange to say the least, but we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Now looks can be deceiving and this one is doing a great job of fooling most people if you didn't know what you were looking for. Now, I'm going to try and repair this trimmer, however, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. The first thing I want to do is look around the trimmer and see if I can see anything wrong with it. However, like usual, I don't see anything that would point to any issues it could be having. The only problem is that it's dirty, which is a good thing because it means it was being used up until this point. Like I said, looks can be very deceiving and we'll soon see what the problem really is. The next thing I want to do is to confirm the problem it's having because you never know, my coworker who owns this trimmer could be doing something wrong when trying to start it. Now I'm going to remove the air filter to make sure it's not wet with fuel because if it is, no air is going to be able to pass through it and of course that's not going to help get the engine to start. So the air filter is not wet, which is a good thing, but it has seen better days. Now the filter may not be wet, but there is some fuel on the edge of it, which is kind of strange. Now even though it's not pristine, it is not bad enough to keep the engine from starting though. So here's where everything gets a little bit more interesting. When trying to move the choke lever, I soon realized that there's something keeping it from working. And with the air filter out of the air box, it's pretty easy to see what that is. The choke flap looks to be hitting the metal plate the cover attaches to. I don't think I've ever seen this problem before, and if I have, I wasn't paying too much attention to it, probably because it wasn't bad enough to get in the way. Now I don't know how it got this way, but I do have a theory about what could have happened to it. However, that won't make any difference unless this trimmer is able to run. So the first thing I need to do is confirm that it will at least start and run for a few seconds after I prime the engine. Luckily it started and ran for a few seconds before stopping on its own. The engine sounds really healthy which is always a plus. I probably should have put some fuel in the tank to test if the carb is working like it should, but I was going to inspect the carb anyway for any issues the owner may not have disclosed. In the meantime, I'm going to give it a quick cleaning, that way it looks as close to brand new as possible. Now this is not my trimmer, it belongs to a coworker, but I do want to make a good impression when I give it back to them. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I typically clean the stuff I work on because I want to keep my hands clean while I film and ultimately it helps with the sale as well if I choose to go that route. So why clean them if they belong to other people? The reason is simple. The people who ask me to work on the stuff will not only get a working tool back, but will also get a fairly clean one back as well. That's to show them how much I appreciate the opportunity because without them, I wouldn't have stuff to film. After a quick cleaning, it looks a whole lot better and I don't have to worry about getting my hands extremely dirty while I handle it. It doesn't have to be spotless, it just has to be clean enough that I can easily clean my hands between takes. I hate to say it, but sometimes my friends and coworkers don't realize how much better their stuff looks when I give it back to them. It's okay though and it makes total sense. If they didn't realize their lack of maintenance is what got their machine broken in the first place, then why would they notice their mower or blower or trimmer looks 10 times better than before? It's just par for the course. Now that it's clean, I think it's time I tell you what I think happened to the choke lever and the plate it's hitting. Like I mentioned earlier on this particular design, the air filter cover attaches to the plate that's hitting the choke flap. So if this trimmer was unsecured in the back of a truck and is free to slide around, then repeated blows over time could push the plate in the way of the choke flap. Now the fix is pretty easy. We can either replace the plate with a new or used one and everything should be back to normal. The other option would be to try and bend the plate back to its original shape. Now it just so happens that I have a parts trimmer available but there's a problem. I really want to get this one back up and running so I don't want to take its plate. I'm also too much of a cheapskate to buy a new one so that only leaves us with one choice and that's to use my favorite tool in my bag, my hammer. What I intend on doing is taking off the plate and then hitting it to try and reshape it. Now this is apparently a bit easier said than done because it turns out this plate is not made out of soft metal. Now I wanted to use this piece of wood to keep from damaging it but it was absorbing too much of the energy I was putting into it. I then tried again on the concrete but I soon realized the wood was the issue. 
However, once I decided to use a massive piece of metal to hit against, the plate gave up pretty easily, but unfortunately it did get bent out of shape. Not a problem, I'm just going to pry on it a little bit and bend it back to shape the best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough. Now this was a lot harder to do because the metal is really sturdy and there wasn't much to grab a hold of. So after a couple of minutes of wrestling with it, this is the best I could do. The front part is the most important part because it needs to be flat, and even though the back still looks a bit bent up, as long as the choke flap can get past it, I think it'll be just fine. Now before I put the plate back on, I'm going to quickly replace the fuel lines, and the reason is because they've gotten a bit smaller, which is causing a leak at the grommet. Not only that, but they've also hardened over time. Now for some reason the grommet is just fine, it's only the lines that have been damaged. I'm also going to take this opportunity to inspect the carb for a bad metering diaphragm. The diaphragm's job is to control fuel flow through the carb, and if it's gotten petrified over time, it won't be able to do that. Luckily, the diaphragm is under this metal plate, so it's not difficult to get access to it. So here's the diaphragm, and the good news is that it's in perfect shape. It's showing no signs of hardening, and there are no wrinkles in it either. Next, I'm going to put the carb back together and then move on to the fuel lines. I would normally replace the bulb as well. However, on this type of carb, we can easily change it at any point afterwards. So I'm going to save film time and do it later. If you didn't know on this type of fuel tank, the fuel cap does not have a built-in air vent. Instead, the vent is installed on the third fuel line that's coming out of the grommet. That's the reason for the extra fuel line. Now, even though this grommet had dark fuel lines, I'm going to switch over to a yellow fuel line instead. If you're having a hard time finding fuel lines, there should be a link in the description that should help you out. Now it does not matter which opening you make for the filter line, the return line, or the air vent. And the openings are very forgiving so it's not difficult to get the lines into the openings either but cutting them at an angle will still help get them started in the opening. Just make sure the fuel line is long enough so the filter can reach the other end of the tank. That way the engine does not starve of fuel while being used on its side. Now for the other two fuel lines, I'm going to leave about one inch of line inside the tank. However, if you want to make the return line a little bit longer, that's perfectly fine. But it's important to keep the air vent line inside the tank shorter. I have seen the air vent line longer than it's supposed to be, but I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. Once the air vent is cut to length, I'll then install the vent and then put it where it belongs, which is an opening on the side of the recoil. The reason you want to install it first is because it'll give you the most room as opposed to doing it after the carb is installed. Now when connecting the fuel lines, the fuel filter line will connect to the larger barbed fitting, while the return line will connect to the thinner barb. It's important not to get these mixed up because if you do mix them up, the carb will draw fuel from the unfiltered return line and eventually it'll cause the screen on the inside of the carb to clog up and stop fuel from flowing through the carb. Before I finish installing the carb, I want to put some fresh mixed fuel into the tank so I can test the fuel flow through the lines. So when pressing the bulb, fuel should come up from the tank through the filter line and into the carb. It will then partially fill the bulb before going back to the tank through the return line. As you can see, the fuel is flowing through the lines like they're supposed to. Now, if the fuel comes up the return line first, instead of the filter line, you have the lines reversed. If you don't see any fuel coming up from the tank, it means you either have a carb issue or your fuel filter is clogged. Since ours is doing what it's supposed to do, we'll finish installing the carb and then check to make sure the choke is working like it should. Luckily, the hammer method seems to have worked, which means we can try and start it. But first, I want to check one more important thing. So I want to check the spark arrestor screen which sits in the muffler's outlet. I want to check and make sure it's not clogged with carbon. The reason I need to check it is because if it is clogged it means the engine will have a difficult time breathing especially at full speed. But as you can see we can see right through it without any issues so there's nothing wrong with it. So we shouldn't have any issues with this trimmer when using it at full speed and we can reinstall it. Now if it was clogged we'd have to clean it with either fire or carb cleaner and then reinstall it. Now after getting the air filter back into place I think it's finally time we try and start it. Hopefully we don't have any surprises.
So it looks like this trimmer starts just fine, and it also seems to be working well. Now there is a way to keep this from happening, but to be honest, it's hard to get people to change their ways. When I gave this back to my coworker, they literally threw it in the back of the truck. I guess I'll be doing this repair again in a year or two. Another option as to why the choke wasn't working would be a broken flap. If that was the case, I'm not sure if they sell just the flap or lever, but if they don't, we'd have to buy a new air filter base instead. So in the end, we got this trimmer's choke working again, it confirmed the metering diaphragm was in great shape, and also replaced the fuel lines. This trimmer should be good for another few years unless something tragic happens again. So my question is, would you have tried to fix the metal plate like I did, or would you have just bought a new one instead? I'm always good to try and use my hammer, but if that didn't work, or I mangled it even more, only then would I buy a new one. Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.